People don't live in the real world today. They don't know half, half of them don't know where the food comes from. That's a big problem. Well, the farming has uh, changed tremendously. I mean, back then you could live off 70 acres comfortably. I'm not a workman. I, yes, that's right. My father, my father before me, on this 70 acres, he had six horses, about eight cows, and 40 ewes. And he used to shoot a lot of rabbits. They used to, you know, make butter with the milk and take into the market and sell the rabbits and the chickens that they reared and fattened twice a week, Tuesdays and Saturdays. But then you transport used to be down next to the market, pay, buying pigs when, when you... Oh, when I started first, and yeah. And yeah, again, there was a market. I had a, I had and a every car and I went to Exeter every Friday. Every bought, 10 miles? Or was it bought pigs and brought back, you know. But I mean, there's market Clean places at Stip Crossland or in Tarnington, yeah, in Biddyford, Cro Barnstable, Oswaldy. Yep. There's everywhere. markets in every town. Mm -hmm. Cattle markets, and now there's just Oswaldy in South Milton. Mm -hmm. Used to be a slaughterhouse in mm -hmm. every, well, not every parish, but there used to be a slaughterhouse everywhere, didn't it? Well, when you used oh, to yeah, every oh, parish. Used to buy, yeah. But now there's one slaughterhouse in Cornwall mm -hmm. and one in Wales. So the lambs mm -hmm. have to go to market and then from there to slaughterhouse or direct mm. to slaughterhouse, depending on... Yeah. The local, when I moved in still, the lo local slaughterhouse was in that shed down by the cricket pavilion where Jeff keeps the cattle in there now. That was small corn, the butcher, mm. killed everything in there. There was bones and all sorts well, in there. Well, two butchers in the village as well, wasn't there? Yeah, and you never, I mean, you never found anybody out through contaminated meat or nothing like that, you know, everything's got out of hand now, you know. I think they make too much fuss of hygiene and all the rest of it. Education is a great thing, but it's um, probably killed a lot of the agricultural businesses. Yeah, well, I think they've taken them out of the local schools and taken them into yeah. these big centres, you know, and that's a different lifestyle altogether. Well, a lot of kids came home at 15 and, mm. and carried on farming because they yeah. knew no other, but that's now, right. once they get past 18, they don't want to get their hands dirty. <laughs> well, as a, I mean, in our teenage days, you never had a choice. No. You had to do what you was told. The day they take no notice of all of what mother and father says once they get in the towns. Farmers are an isolated lot really, but I, I quite understand it because you you spend hours in a field working. Nobody about, you know. You work so many hours on your own. I think this is why you know, I mean it's different for the younger farmers, for the older farmers. I'd say it's different especially now. I mean, yeah. never felt isolated. No. Ever? I don't think I have. Always been somebody about somewhere. Well, yes. I mean, when I yeah, said... Yeah, but you, you, you went to school and had schoolmates different. You yeah, know, but then you when you come home, there was workmen, you was milking yeah, the cows, or in the morning, mm -hmm. seven o'clock, there'd be a couple of chaps here coming, mm -hmm. and one would be going to feed the pigs, another on the tractor, another one well, that's when you going was, out doing something else. Was here, you know, but when I started, just me on the farm. Well, it's one of the things is joy is seeing new life coming in. Mm. Calves, sheep, anything like that. Always good. New crops coming up. Yeah, everything growing. 